All right. Okay. I'm here with Sarah Russell. Um, we're going to talk about her practice and how she works with clients and how she incorporates lab smarts into her practice. So Sarah, uh, welcome. And um, I want to do the find out first, like, tell me a little bit about your practice and what type of clients that you see. Yeah. Thanks, Marianne. So in my uh, one-on-one -on -one practice, I see clients with complex health concerns. Most of my clients are women. Um, most of those uh, women are of reproductive age, and some of them may be trying to conceive or may already be pregnant, or they may have children uh, who were born either recently or a long time ago. Um, I also work with some somewhat more obscure health conditions. Um, some of my clients are men, and some of my clients are also children, uh, as well as, you know, on occasion, I will also work with postmenopausal women, depending on, uh, on what the situation is. I also um, incorporate lab smarts in, um, in the area of practice that is a little bit less one-on-one -on -one for me, which is, uh, the training that I do with, um, with, uh, other colleagues who are working particularly with, um, the reproductive years. Oh, tell me about that. What's, what kind of training is that? Yeah. So I have, um, I've, I've created three CEU programs, um, one for the preconception period, one for pregnancy, and one for postpartum. And they are three evidence-based programs that guide practitioners through the process of supporting clients during the family building years, um, both in a group setting and on a more one-on-one -on -one individualized basis. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Um, um, so, so then we'll talk first about then how do you incorporate like like we'll talk about the client piece of it, and then we can talk about the practitioner training and sure. how you incorporate lab smarts in the both. But so, like, how do you start working with clients? Like, how, why do they why do they even come to you? What, what are they looking for? What concerns do they have? Yeah, well, you know, usually uh, people get referred to me because they have hard to pin down um, combinations of symptoms. So, um, a lot of the time, I'll be um, my name will come up either through one of their um, doctors or someone else on their healthcare team. Uh, you know, it could be an acupuncturist. It could be a different nutritional therapy practitioner. Um, sometimes a psychotherapist will recommend that a client work with me for whatever reason. You know, a lot of the time people who have health problems also have some emotional struggles around the physical concerns because it can be hard to manage all of that. So um, yeah, I, I specialized early in my practice in the complex health issue because issues because so many colleagues were <laughs> were recommending uh, complex clients to me and I just decided to roll with it. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> so you get the hard you get the hard ones like nobody yeah. else. Yeah. And then they come to you. That's cool. And so you help them, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, mate, like what? What's what are some of the complex issues that you? Yeah, it, you know, a lot of people who come to me have um, genetic or hereditary conditions that affect their connective tissue um, integrity, which can cause a number of uh, symptoms across many different body systems. It can also cause malabsorption uh, because the GI tract, for example, could be less competent. Um, so it's really important to kind of stay on top of things and make sure that people's nutrition is balanced, you know, especially people who are having issues that are affecting their ability to eat enough food or, you know, um, people who may have to be more careful about timing meals, either because they have gastroparesis or SIBO or some other condition that is causing difficulty spacing meals um, because of GI uh, symptoms and, and just structural stuff. So sometimes these people are struggling to get enough nutrition in. Um, sometimes they're struggling to absorb the nutrients they, they take in, um, and, um, anywhere in between. So, um, yeah. And then of course, you know, when I'm working with people who are pregnant, I want to make sure that they are, um, adequately nourishing themselves and, and their, uh, and their developing fetus. Right, right. Yeah. So what are those? What are some of the things that you work on around pregnancy or trying to get pregnant? Yeah, you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it really depends. If somebody comes to me with struggles 
that have to do with infertility, I'll want to assess both what's going on in their case and in their uh, partner's case, if they are with a partner who is going to be the the birth parent. Sometimes people are working with, uh, you know, with a sperm donor. Sometimes the the person will be going undergoing IVF either through um, you know, their own eggs or donor eggs or previously frozen eggs from themselves. So it, it just all, people are all over the map, yeah. but essentially my concern is always making sure that we're troubleshooting anything that, um, that may be going on. So for example, you know, if somebody is struggling to conceive and they're consuming immoderate amounts of alcohol, that could be part of the issue because maybe they have some hormonal imbalances because alcohol tends to, elevate estrogen and decrease progesterone. And so the person could have uh, a luteal phase defect just caused by a drinking habit. And sometimes people don't realize that they actually may benefit from quitting alcohol before they get pregnant versus after. Um, So, yeah. And sometimes even, you know, just making sure that, you know, just nailing down iron uh, is really important because some people can be all over the map, literally with iron status. Um, if, if a person is um, iron deficient, that can cause issues, uh, particularly, you know, during pregnancy. Um, if a person has too much iron, uh, we obviously do not want them to, to, uh, to have an iron overload issue that could then cause joint and, um, and liver problems. So, or, you know, even just issues with uh, any infectious um, load that they may have. Right. Or even in copper excess or that totally. too. Yeah. Look at right. Yeah. Yeah. A so, the, you know, other nutrition, other nutrients like vitamin D and um, folate, B6. People, it's so interesting just even seeing how people's tolerance for different amounts of vitamin B6 can really affect which multivitamin they will feel better taking during preconception and pregnancy. Uh, some the some of those formulas contain up to 50 milligrams a day of v6 and others contain as few as two milligrams and i i use them all <laughs> anywhere from very low end to really high end depending on what the person's test results may be you know i mean even just looking at the nutrients that can affect homocysteine levels it has a huge impact on um healthy pregnancy outcomes right how do you so then Walk me through that process of how, like, you get them on board, and what do you do? You order blood work for them, do you, or they they come to you with it? What's the process of like incorporating blood yeah. work and, and other yeah. tests? It depends. You know, sometimes people will come to me; they already have had some blood work done. I I I always like to see what they've already had done, so I'm not okay. having them spend extra money. I don't have a standard, you know, battery of tests that I will have everybody run. Um, I'll look first of all at what their health history is, what their current signs and symptoms are, what their health concerns are, what they would like in the future. So I look at the past, present, and future kind of timeline as at you know, in, in relation to the presenting health issue. And um and then on the basis of that, uh, depending on what they already had run, there may be some areas where more tests are going to be helpful. So for example, going back to the uh to the example of somebody who is struggling to conceive or who has a history of miscarriage, I want to make sure that they don't have uh, an underlying autoimmune condition. Um, You know, sometimes people will have uh, undiagnosed celiac disease or, um, you know, some other um, autoimmune conditions like an autoimmune uh, uh, hypothyroidism, which can interfere with uh, successful, um, pregnancy. So these are things that a lot of the time a person's medical team will forget to run or just won't think about. Right. A complete thyroid panel. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I'm a huge fan of a full thyroid panel with antibodies for almost anyone, you know, and then somebody could just come with, for example, I I have a client who is a young man. He's in his uh, mid twenties and he has joint pain. He has a lot of joint pain and it, it, you know, sometimes affects the way he walks and, uh, and his daily activities, which is not common in, in a, in a young person, his age of, you know, with a healthy lifestyle and, uh, and a regular kind of movement, um, routine. 
um, he hasn't had any injuries. So, you know, I suggested certain uh, markers that he might want to ask his doctor to run. I prefer if a person is already paying for insurance for them to get their their lab tests covered by insurance if their physician will order it. So sometimes I'll I'll write a letter to the physician explaining, you know, who I am, what I do, and what markers I think might be useful for them to run. And then I'll include uh, references to scientific articles that talk about those things in a way that is coherent with the person's presenting health issues. And a lot of the time the doctor will order the the lab work. It's just, you know, the average doctor has so few minutes with their patient that they're just in a hurry. And they also don't have a huge amount of time to do um, a lot of research yeah, on, right. on their patient's conditions. I'm usually the person on the person's healthcare team who spends the most time reviewing the case. It doesn't, you know, um, I just have that uh, privilege because of the way that I work. Um, and and so I, I like for people to be in contact uh, with their entire medical team and for things to be just really transparent and collaborative because I feel like that really helps people a lot. And, you know, particularly American clients who are paying so much money for private health insurance, I I want them to get those things covered when they can. Yeah. Are those, so when you write that letter, those doctors seem to be receptive to that? And it really depends. Yeah, it really depends. Um, a lot of the time, you know, I, I have the sense that, that the physician orders the lab work simply because they don't have time to read the, the, uh, linked scientific articles and it just feels like a pain. Um, <laughs> So they'll just do it to sort of not have to have a follow-up conversation about why they didn't run it anyway. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the time they will run it just because of yeah. the, the bibliography that I put on there. <laughs> so the, that that young man who you said you were working with that had those joint pains, so he has some autoimmune conditions that you discovered? He may. You know, I, I actually just, um, this is just a, a very recent thing. So I just sent him the list today. So I have no idea what will actually come out of his testing. Yeah. 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 So then so the so then how do you you incorporate that into LabSmart? So you use LabSmarts and, and enter that information in. Yeah. There. Yeah, absolutely. So when a client um brings their blood test results to me and you know if if the physician won't order lab tests or say they don't have insurance coverage and it's cheaper for them to order their own blood work through a direct to patient uh, service or even through my, uh, through my lab service that I use, um, then, um, then they'll, you know, I'll get the results directly from, um, either from the client if they ordered it themselves or through the lab service, if, if they ordered it through me, and then I will enter the client's information in lab smarts and, and I'll have the, that PDF then, or, you know, on, on the screen, I have um, I have all that information, and what some of the things that I really appreciate about Lab Smarts are the elevation um, piece, oh, the adjustments for ele high yeah. elevation lines, yeah, yeah. and then a, and then the um, the fact that that the software is constantly improving in terms of how sensitive it is to um, the the lute luteal versus the follicular phase of the cycle the trimester of pregnancy for anybody working with women's health. Um, it, it, it makes such a huge difference. I mean, uh, yeah. Just not have to go and look and see, figure out what's right, what lute, what phase menstrual phase they're in and tr try to figure out the right reference range for it. The software does it for you automatically. Yeah. Yeah. It saves so much time. Um, and you know, I I also um, am fascinated by the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. So I like that you have that on your um, on your software as well. So what? So you show the clients. So you either send them the PDF of the report with all the bar graphs, or show them. You do a Zoom and you show them online. Yeah, yeah. I'll typically just show them on the screen. If somebody wants the PDF, I'll send it to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do what do they say like about it and like any good things like, wow, this is so interesting. I've never seen. Yeah. My these yeah. Graphs. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting because looking using ranges that are, that are more um, nuanced, 
a lot of things that may have been flagged as abnormal, especially in a pregnant person's lab work, is so reassuring to them because, you know, maybe everything except for maybe two things on their complete blood count were flagged. Uh, and because the the pregnancy reference ranges tend to be broader because there's just so much going on, in, especially as pregnancy progresses, uh, then a lot of things that may have looked off and concerning which can cause a lot of anxiety to someone during pregnancy, they actually, they realize, oh, this is so reassuring. It feels so much better. This, I'm actually in range. This feels so good. Um, and then we can actually focus on, like, instead of 15 things being off on someone's lab work, it's only just one or two things. And we're like, okay, let's focus in on these two things. Oh, and wow. uh, so much nicer than, you, you know, and then the opposite thing can happen, usually not during pregnancy, but, um, you know, with say with a complex health client, whose doctor has said, oh, you know, everything's fine. Everything's normal. Um, because LabSmarts uses more of an optimal range, then things are more nuanced in, in this direction where something that may have fallen through the cracks because the traditional um, allopathic process of flagging something as abnormal uses uh, standard deviations. I, I'm a huge fan of standard deviations, but um, if you only flag the top and the bottom 2.5%, that doesn't mean that um, that everything in between is healthy. It, right. There could be things that are kind of off, uh, but because they're not right in the top or bottom 2.5%, then um, the, the person is kind of falling through the cracks and their their marker looks normal. Like I can't tell you how often somebody comes to me with a thyroid panel where everything is in the medical reference range, but my gosh, the teeth, the free T3 is low. Yeah. Uh, and I want to help the client work through that. You know, a lot of the time it's just because the person isn't eating enough, um, especially females. Uh, a lot of low T3 is just, you need to stop your day. You need, you need to have pauses in your day to eat. Uh, don't skip breakfast, you know, just such a good reminder for people to take good care of themselves. There's usually in a situation where their free T3 or, you know, even sometimes even free T4 are functionally low. It doesn't mean there's anything medically wrong with them. It just means, gosh, let's just kind of look at the big picture and see what we can do to help your yeah. body some things that right get you back in balance right before things get outside of those those standard ranges then then there's a problem right yeah yeah oh, that's good. oh so so then you 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 start in the beginning with the blood work and then do you after you do some things recommendations do you rerun it again or ask them to go to their doctor again after so many months or yeah, typically, um, you know, for example, with vitamin D, especially if they're supplementing, I want to make sure that a couple times a year that's being remeasured because, um, you know, say they come to you the first time, it's say midsummer and it, and they're already supplementing on 2000 IUs per day um, and they're in a good healthy range. I don't change that, but I want to know when it gets, when the days get shorter and, and it's darker outside, do they maybe need to increase a little bit? Um, so I like for, I like for people to measure their vitamin D and I do this myself a couple times a year. I, and I like to give people just this kind of like memory trigger of thinking of it either as like around the, uh, summer and winter solstice or, around the, t the two times of year when the time is changing and you're changing your clock back and it's like, oh, okay, time to test my vitamin D again. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, because so then outside of that, then do you do maybe just follow-ups after you're working with them every Yeah, yeah. How months do you do that? So I work with clients for three month chunks of time. And then, you know, depending on where they are after that three month period, we we may decide to sign up to work together for three more months, or they may join my nutritional therapy group where they're getting a little bit of a lighter uh, support, but nonetheless ongoing. Um, so a lot of my clients will uh, want to be followed up in some way for, <laughs> you know, uh, for a little bit after they're done with their initial three month uh, package with me. During pregnancy, I I like to follow people for, you know, the entire pregnancy and then uh, the postpartum period. As time goes on, they will probably need less frequent 
sessions. But during my first three month package with a client, I will follow up with them every two weeks just to support them with the implementation of the nutrition and lifestyle stuff and to stay on top of how their symptom picture is shifting over time and helping them kind of troubleshoot through the practical pieces. Like, you know, oh, I understand I need to eat more often, but I'm really struggling with how to do breakfast um, and how to time my meals depending on my digestive uh, responses or, you know, they could have all kinds of different struggles. So I like to um, to do that frequent follow-up. And then, you know, if the person needs to check in via email along the way between one session and the next, and there's no reason to wait two weeks. If you just started a new supplement and you feel horrendous after trying it, we need yeah. to talk, like, you know, uh, figure out what to do next. So email is perfect for something like that. Do that. So in terms of blood work follow-up, do you do do you do that with them? And then you like how in the software, there's a comparison where you can. Yeah. Them. Yeah. It depends. You know, if a person is only working with me for three months, we may not really have a chance. Like say, you know, we had an intake session and then a couple of weeks later they did their blood tests and then we went over them. It may not even be time for them to retest something, but if they come to me again later um, and it's appropriate for them to retest something, then it's really helpful to see that comparison and and see how things changed. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. Or, or maybe they come back and they just do their yearly. Yeah. Look and come back. Yeah. To you with, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 So do you, yeah. Have, do you incorporate, like how is lab smarts incorporated in, in terms of your package? Do you charge them extra or is it just part of your, your normal packaging pricing? I have, I have two one-on-one -on -one package pricings. One is for people who uh, are mainly just doing nutrition, um, at just, you know, food-based nutrition to optimize their health and, and another package that is a, a little more expensive uh, for people needing uh, more extensive lab support. Um, and, uh, and so the pricing takes into account the fact that I am spending more time on that client's um case because of the time looking at lab markers yeah so it's part it's just incorporate use your use of the software is just incorporated into your yeah. intake process it's not yeah. something that you separately advertise as hey i, I can look at your blood work as, as something right I, I yeah see. yeah you know because i think that it's a tool looking at blood work is a tool and and my practice is is really uh client-centered so if my client needs um, that type of support, I'll suggest that that they get it. But if they don't, um, then that's not really what what we do. I mean, I I think everybody should, you know, ideally I would like to see a complete blood count, uh, vitamin D. You know, there are certain things that I want that I really do want to see for everyone because I think they're very important, just human health. Uh, right. markers. And I, I do cover the interpretation of those in my basic package. I mean, I, it, the, my um, functional fine tuning, the one with, that I, where I account for more extensive, deeper lab work is, is something that, um, that assumes that they're going to be doing more than those basic things. Right, um, right. There so are people who are just huge fans of, you know, certain, blood tests or other functional tests for everybody. And I, I, I'm not test centered. I'm not supplement centered. I'm really client centered. That's good. Right. But so then just getting into and specific labs though, like blood markers, are there any specific ones maybe that you want to see for even postpartum women? Like what's happening in after birth? Like, is there anything there or anything other than the thyroid panel or anything else that you can think of that is important? Well, yeah. I mean, it, I don't know if there is a specific what, you know, set of things that applies to everyone. I do like to make sure that they, their vitamin D levels are on track because it is so important to maternal and infant health. Um, and immune balance is so important postpartum um, that I want to make sure that the person doesn't have too much or too little. And, also, you know, when it comes time for the conversation about whether their baby should supplement, uh, part of, of that question rotates on, you know, how much vitamin, what is the mom's vitamin D status? 
um, how robust is that? And then how much does it make sense to supplement for the baby? Right. So you're, yeah, because that, if they're breastfeeding, I mean, that's the nutrients and everything that the baby's getting. So if you can kind of assess if, if the mom's low, indeed, the baby's probably low. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. There, you know, there is a lab that, that tests, um, uh, breast milk for certain nutrients. I, I don't believe they're testing vitamin D it's called, um, I can't remember, but it, it, it's a, it's a very good, uh, service. Um, lactation lab. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 They look at some of the essential nutrients and also some of the toxic metals in breast milk. It's just fascinating. Oh, wow. Do you find that do you have clients who have problems with breastfeeding and do you find that they're just nutrient deficiencies or anything around that? It depends. Yeah. But, um, sometimes yes. Um, yeah. So I, I want to, you know, or even just, uh, moms who are breastfeeding, who are worried about some toxic exposures that they know that they had in the past and they just want the peace of mind of knowing they're not passing that on in excessive amounts in their milk it can be yeah. so, so reassuring. Um, I, I personally think that lab work is, it is, it is an area where we as practitioners can help lower our client's anxiety if we are using it a certain way. Um, I think sometimes practitioners get so gung-ho about looking at labs and looking for, you know, just digging deep for what could possibly be wrong that they can actually increase a person's anxiety. And I really try hard not to do that. I, I try to work in the opposite direction. I want to find out what's going on with the client, how I can help them get better, but I also just want them to feel really reassured on everything that I can reassure them on. Yeah. I like how you're saying that when you put it in, put the values in the software and then they see that when I adjust automatically for pregnancy trimesters that they do see that their ranges and their values are okay. And they're, yeah. you relieve some of that anxiety. Totally. That's a good, a, a different way to look at it. And that's a good, good feature. I didn't even think of that. Like kind of. Yeah. It's really important. I mean, when you work with one-on-one -on -one clients, it makes such a difference. Just, oh, I don't have to worry about that. Or, you know, I have something to focus on in the case of something that's off. Um, it, it's just so helpful because otherwise you're just worried about everything or you don't know. And then you're concerned because you don't know. Oh, that's, that's cool. Oh, this is great. I, I mean, yeah, I think, and I'm not sure if I have any other questions, but do you have any other like comments about using the software or how, how it's helped you? I mean, maybe save, save time. Like were you, how much time maybe were you spending before versus using the software. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know how to even quantify the amount of time that I was spending before using the software. Um, but it, it's incredibly time consuming. If you have an active practice, you, you will spend a lot of time looking at lab markers. And I still notice that sometimes, you know, if a person comes to me with, um, values from, um, you know, using, uh, reference ranges that are, uh, that are not American, uh, then I'm, I'm looking at those or converting them and to put them in, like, I will typically convert those to us reference ranges to put and put them into lab smarts, which is still time consuming, right? Uh, just, you know, I gotta get, I gotta get the international ranges in there. That's, that's something. Yeah, no, that will be awesome when, when you do, and then you can market it to people in the EU, for example, or in the middle East, there are a lot of really interesting functional medicine people say even in Dubai, <laughs> there's some, yeah. So, um, people all over the world, I think would be really interested in, in lab smarts. And, um, you know, I, I still sometimes, <laughs> you know, um, will look at very specific things. Like I had this one client with, um, with autoimmune hepatitis who was breastfeeding and, um, all of her lab markers got completely normal except alkaline phosphatase, which was still high. So I did a little bit of research in uh, PubMed to find out if um, breastfeeding could change uh, alkaline phosphatase levels. And lo and behold, it can. So by the time I checked what those were during breastfeeding, what was normal during breastfeeding, she was it was 
she was in remission. It was amazing. Uh, but it was so nice just to be able to reassure her of that. Um, oh, that, I mean, I, yeah, I don't have that one. I think I, well, I should have a, a marker for, you know, adjustment for breastfeeding. Hmm. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Just even little things like that. But, you know, I'm the fact that Lab Smarts does so much of that work for me, it gives me more time to go dig, dig deeper on little questions like that. Right. And, and like then that. when I find out, oh, this, this does make a difference, then I can, then we can have a conversation around that. And then maybe it will right. end up just in Lab Smarts. So I feel like one of the, one of the things I really appreciate about Lab Smarts is you, because, you know, like, for example, you, you did this amazing presentation for my case study toolkit, which is uh, my clinician group that gets together to talk about case studies. You, you, you did a training for us on iron, uh, iron panels and, and what they can mean and, and some things to be careful about when we're thinking about possibly recommending iron supplementation. And, um, and I know that when, that if I find something interesting in the scientific literature or, you know, if it feels like there may be an, a reference range distinction that could, would be really helpful. I know that I can email you and we can talk and you're so responsive and so interested in the science. And yeah. I, yeah, I really we, that. Yeah, together. No, that's, thank you. That's cool. I love this stuff. I want to, that I'm always doing research and I want everyone to, you know, to come to me to say that I, I'm going to, if you have a c- concern or question or you find something like, like the breastfeeding thing, like, just, I, I love this stuff. Like, and I want to, I want to continue to make it so that the practitioners don't have to do all that research. That's what I like to do. And that's what I want to do. And so then I can put it in the software and, and, and save them time like that. Absolutely. That's- it's a great tool. And I love recommending it to people for that reason. And, you know, um, <laughs> one of the things to remember is that you're not just offering a product. It's a service. It's both. Um, because, you know, if, if you, if it were just, you know, this is what it is and it's never changing, then it's just a product, but right. the way you deliver it and are constantly improving, it makes it a service. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, how, just how I did all this research, research recently around TSH and how we j- adjusted the ranges downward, even a little more to reflect what's, what's really happening. That the one to two range for TSH is really where, where people should be focusing on and, yeah, I'm always out there looking for that. Yeah, yeah. That. yeah, thanks. And, you know, I also appreciated a conversation that we had where you were talking about more individual reference ranges. So for some markers, we may notice in some of our clients that say, you know, maybe 95% of our clients will do best with their TSH in that range of one to two. But say you have that exceptional client who will actually feel better, like somewhere around 2.4. We just notice that <laughs> and we know that that's their optimal, right? I mean, sometimes there sometimes there could be some kind of a compensation where something is going up a little bit higher, lower than the typical optimal range that we would use for a client in that situation for whatever reason, you know, like. Um, right. All right. It, it, and they do. There are studies and, and that talk about what you really should not so much compare TSH to somebody else. You could just, you should compare it to the you know, person. Over time to that yeah. same person. Yeah. And if there are major deviations, then there's a concern, but if they're consistently, like you're saying at 2.4, 2.5 and they feel good at that, I mean, that's, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, one of the things that I do try to educate my clients around um, when possible is to be consistent about if, if you are a premenopausal female to, um, to try to test your, to do your thyroid panel more or less at the same point in your menstrual cycle consistently, mm-hmm. because there can be slight changes between the follicular and luteal phase um, in some of the values. So yeah. it's nice, you know, I, I personally, my favorite time of the month to do most of my lab work is just day three of my cycle, day two or three. Like it's easy to remember. Um, and there are a lot of hormonal markers that are just really helpful. Like if I'm, if I'm adding an LH and FSH, but that's like my, you know, my uh, favorite time to, to test those two markers. So if I'm doing thyroid, that's kind of where I try to measure it. 
um, you know, even prolactin levels can go up and down. Uh, so if a person is monitoring their prolactin levels for whatever reason, it's nice for them to be consistent if they can with that point of the yeah. cycle, because otherwise there, it could look like there are fluctuations that are really not there. Right. That's a good point. You just found something recently on prolactin and how that around, like, I think it post postpartum, how, it, how that changes. Yeah, in. it can. Um, there are different ranges depending on how far out from the moment of birth the person is. So if they've been breastfeeding up to three months or up to six months, or like, I think past six months, it's just a pretty stable uh, range, but it does change. It's almost like there are trimesters of breastfeeding in a way um, yeah. for prolactin levels. It's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Well, that's a good, so when I implement breastfeeding as an attribute, I'll have like a drop down of, you know, maybe what, how far out from pregnancy yeah. we can adjust based on that. That's good advice. Yeah. I like working with you because you, you, you do a lot of research too, which is yeah. Yeah, I, I love the research piece, actually. It's just, you know, and then, of course, when you work with a complex client demographic, there are just some nuances that you're going to have to go in and research because unique scenarios will present themselves all the time. And it's it's really fun to do that detective work. Yeah, that's why your complex cases you need somebody like you who can spend the time with them. You Like you're saying, their doctor just doesn't have the time. Yeah, yeah. People need a team. I know. And it's so much fun when, uh, you know, when someone's doctor writes me an email and says, hey, let's talk on Zoom about about my patient. Um, I It has happened a couple of times and it's just really fun putting our heads together and talking about articles. And it doesn't happen often, but, but it, when it does, it's super fun. Right. You know that they really care. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Oh, thank you, Sarah. This has been fun. It, it, yeah. It's nice how you work and how you're using the software to help you, you know, save time, help you reduce anxiety in some of your patients. I mean, are your clients like that's, that's a really cool feature. Like I didn't. Think it is. That. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, only somebody who's doing the clinical work would really notice that aspect, right? Because then you, you're just with the client in that process. And, and you can tell when somebody's anxiety levels are going up or down, or they'll say, Oh, I feel so reassured or, you know, yeah, and just even maybe hear them exhaling. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate this. This is nice talking with you. Likewise. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been super fun. And thank you so much for everything that you do.